it, it is such an honor to be here tonight. God bless you all. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, I enjoy your singing. And it's different on the front row than it is at the end of that camera on another state away. I had goosebumps going up and down my legs, and I'm thinking, I'm supposed to speak. And then Nancy got over to the side because I opened my eyes, and she was just totally gone. And I'm going, oh, the Spirit of God was so strong. Yes, it was. There is definitely, oh, my Jesus. That means he's in the house. Hey, we're, when he's in us and we're in the house, he ought to be in the house. But when he's in the house like that, that means you're letting him come out of your house to flow in the midst of this house. And that's what counts. Hallelujah. Everywhere we've gone, I sought the Lord's face for what he wanted me to tell this group because each group is different. Um, last, my days are mixed up, but I was in Elohim City. But anyway... I asked the Lord, I said, you know, everywhere has great ministers. There's Gary and Chuck, and the room's full of ministers. What, what could I add, Lord? But well, sometimes it's just a confirming witness. That's it. But in Elohim City, he said, I want you to tell them to declare thou unto me. I said, okay. You know, and he gave me the scriptures, and, and I began to share. And after the service was over, this little mama came to me outside and we were in our walking clothes walking around looking at the grounds and she had tears in her eyes and she came up and I had noticed one of her daughters that was blind but she was still out there trying to praise God when mama came up to me and she goes declaring over my children was in my heart but I didn't know if I could I said oh yes, yes. you can declare the Lord over your yes. children yes. declare it over your ministry Declare it over your own self. And she starts crying because she has two children that were born blind. I said, that wasn't God's idea. Declare the word over those children. Yeah. Stun the doctors. I love to see them stun. Yeah. They say the same thing. Well, I don't know how that happened. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. But anyway, for this house, he told me to tell you to seek ye my face. And I thought... I even told him, I said, God, these people love you. They've walked with you probably longer than me. He goes, no. You tell them, I said, seek ye my face. And when I saw that, and I'm going to tell you the dream he gave me at Gary's house. I shared it with Gary. This is a very intimate, close encounter that each one of us have with him that will change your life forever. Amen. We're supposed to, Gary was talking, we're supposed to be balanced in all areas. But you know, sometimes being in a flesh and blood body, you, you tend to get out of balance in an area. Yes, you do. You know, I have been out of balance before. I thought it was anchored. I was on my own cord. I've been out of balance and on my red horse before, which is another story. I'm sure Brother Martin shared that. We won't go there. But in the dream that I had... In the dream, I, wa I was coming back home. So any of you that have loved ones that once knew God or walked with God, but they seem to turn away, they're coming back. Oh, God, if you could have saw what I saw, they're coming back. But I walked up to what was my home, except for what's not my real home, where I literally live in this body. And the ground was filled with hundreds of people. Inside the house, there was hundreds of people. And what was my husband came toward me, and he got about that far from my face, and I looked in that face, and I don't remember anything else about him, except he had blue eyes, and where those eyes were was the oceans of the world. And I looked in those eyes, and in those eyes is the length and the height and the depth of love that you cannot imagine. Amen. You would turn your other cheek in those places. You, the man that did this horrible thing, you would find mercy for him in that place. You go, well, you're not the father. That's true. But in that place, I can pray for that man and pray for the father. There is endless love in that place. I never wanted to leave those eyes. There's peace there and comfort there. Things that we can't imagine. Love to us 
is, I love you if you don't cross me, Chuck, you know, or you try to whip out in front of me in traffic, I love you there. But if you say something against me, then. But in those eyes, I love you regardless. I will do anything to stay in those eyes. And, and I hugged him, and he embraced me. And, and I cannot describe that. I don't have words for what happened to me. And I woke up, and, and at first it was carnal. And, and your carnal mind kicks in. And I go, oh, God, I'm on tour, and I'm dreaming about another guy. <laughs> My husband's brown-eyed. Y'all have seen Brother Martin. And then in the softest, most beautiful voice you've ever heard, the Lord goes, it's me. And my heart just melted. And I went in there and I told Gary. And Gary said, well, you know, the oceans are the nations of the world. That's where we're at. Amen. It's not just right here. Katusa's great. Haskell's great. Our few in Bartow, they're great. But oh my God, he's got bigger things. Amen. Oh my God. And this is a people that will lay their life down for him. And other people won't understand. Why do you love him? He killed someone. But those eyes, those eyes laid his life down to love you when nobody else wanted you. And those eyes, you do anything. Those eyes, they're going to win the nations. And we'll do anything for those eyes. I said, I told Gary, I said, Gary, how do I make the nation see those eyes you know I can think about it and I want to cry because if you're in leadership you've had your toes stepped on anybody in here never had your toes stepped on okay and you know how easy it is to have something rise up in you that wants to say who do you think you are but not those eyes those eyes would never do that it doesn't matter what you do tomorrow he's gonna love you anyway he's not gonna want it for you but he's gonna love you unconditionally but right now, I believe he's telling this ministry is personal. It's, yes. I don't have a word closer than that, but it means come to me face to face, just you and me. Yes. You know, I love your wife singing, but this is personal. She needs to get to that face herself. You need to get to that face yourself yes. because it'll change you to change the nations. And we're there right now. This isn't years off. It's right now. Seek ye. You know, it's so easy for us to seek him if uh, one time when we were younger, our, our younger son, probably three or four at the time, and he was hemorrhaging through the kidneys. I had a father that was dying of cancer in another hospital. Two different towns, two different hospitals. I had to stay with the small one. The doctors are going, I don't know what's wrong. And, and he was pouring blood, you know. And I'm a baby in the Lord. I'm in my pampers. But, you know, even in those hours... When it, I would spend the days with him, and they were getting to sleep, and I'd run over to Dad at night, and back and forth, and back and forth. And about the third day, I said, God, you promised me. And immediately, our son amended, and he was healed, and the doctor go, listen, we checked in not knowing. We checked out the same way. I'm just telling you, healed in one day. He healed immediately. Yes, but yes, when yes. I cried out, see, he was there. Yes. The doctor said, well, I don't know what was wrong with him, but he's better now. So we can seek that face, and we can cry out. Why is it that every other voice in the nation has gotten louder and we're more quiet? It's time for us to get bold in him. Yes. Our, we were singing that song about our nation. Listen, our forefathers were bold. They laid everything on the line. The lives of their family, all of their wealth. They believed in the God they saw. Okay, that's still in us and even greater. All right, tonight, let's start with uh, Psalms 27. I think about those eyes, and it's a cross between wanting to run and wanting to cry. Seek the face of God. And you know what? There's no age on that. You can seek him anytime, anywhere. Psalms 27 and verse 8. 
I'm going to read it to you out of the Amplified. It said, you have said, seek my face, inquire for and require my presence as your vital need. But do we do that? You know, I, I have tended, I admit, I have tended in my life to seek him when there was a vital need. What if you get a panicky phone call? Then I seek him. But listen, what if you sought him every day of your life? You know, and I know nobody wants to admit, well, you know, I've tried. But not this kind of seeking. This is a different kind of, he begins to be an all-consuming love. Remember when you fell in love with your wife or your mate? Remember how obnoxious you were on the phone eight hours? Hung out the house till the relatives ran you off? This love, much greater than that. We need to be obnoxious for the love of our heart so that the world begins to know we're in love. And listen, people in love do crazy things. That's going to be us. Glory to God. You had said, seek my face, inquire for and require my presence as your vital need. My heart says to you, your face, your presence, Lord, will I seek, inquire for and require of necessity and on the authority of your word. Do you know that we have authority? Listen, people, we have authority we haven't even touched. Yes, yes. But you know what? In those eyes, I can see my authority. The more I look in those eyes, the more I seek that face, the more alive the authority of God comes on the inside of me. So that when you're faced with an impossible situation, when you're faced with two blind children and you're the mom and they were born that way, and you don't like it and you don't know why, something rises up on the inside of you and goes, then let's change it. Several weeks ago, I don't have the date, it's before I left, probably a month or so ago, uh, the Lord spoke to me and said, tell my people if they don't like the status quo, then change it. That's it. Amen. That's it. I said, change the way it's played. status quo is not a word I use, which he does to me. Either that or I can't spell the word. He makes you dig. But bottom line, it means the circumstances you're going through, good or bad, if you don't like it, you have the authority, you change it. Change it. You say, well, how do you do that? Seek the face. Amen. Seek the face. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. In the eyes. What was it? The eyes are the mirrors of the soul. Oh, I never knew that before I saw that face. Never. That word seek means to search out, especially in worship. That was obvious tonight, or prayer. It means to strive to ask her after, to beseech. It means to desire I had to check my own heart. What are you really desiring? Well, I, I want the pool clean, and, and my husband needs a helper. And I mean, you know, be honest now with God, because this is the hour when you're going to shine. He's fixing to put his people on display. Yes. Not me. I'm not anybody. If you're filled with him, you're a candidate. That's it. And it might be at That's Walmart. It. it might be where you get your hair done or pump your gas, but somebody's going to come to you. And they won't even know why. Preach it. That happened even while we were at Elohim City that second day. And, and this young man comes to me and he goes, he said, I have my arm full of groceries because I'm a man and we don't need buggies. I thought, okay. And he said, I looked at her and he said, it was obvious she was having a horrible day. The checker. And he said, I just said, you have a nice day. And he said, she turned around and looked at me and goes, I really needed that. And he's trying to get out, and she's still talking to him. Well, see, that's the God in you, reaching out and making a difference. Now, those aren't big words. They weren't special words. But when they come forth with the power, especially when the love of God, which says, I know you're having a bad day, and I care. See, it lifted her. Now, you don't even know what happened to her after. Maybe she deposited that in somebody else. But that young man had been seeking the face of God. It means to seek after or to secure. That word, ye my face, it means in front of. Yes. Let's, I was trying to think of the saint, but you need to get um, up front and personal or in front of and personal. You need to get personal with your Savior. 
And of course, maybe we start out that way. You know, at the altar, I'm weeping and crying, and I don't care what anybody else thinks, but I'm telling you, ask yourself tonight what happened in your walk over however many years it is, and circumstances have hammered on you, you know? Did you kind of lose the, the hunger or the love or the joy? You don't even mean to. I asked the Lord several months ago, and since then, and since the face, my joy has come back, but I asked God, I said, because it'll show your own heart. And I said, God, what happened to my joy? And he said, it's still there. He said, you just let circumstances overwhelm it. Uh -huh. Hey, that's easy to do. But not when you look in those eyes. Right. It doesn't matter who died. It doesn't matter what the doctor told you. And that face, it's not over till it's over. And he's got everything in his hand. Yes, Seek you my face. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's look at Psalms 4. Now, everywhere I go, all I can think of is seek my face. And most people go, well, I've been seeking his face. I saw that a long time ago, but I just got it. <laughs> Psalms chapter 4 and verse 2. O ye sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? And how long will you love vanity and seek after leasing? I go, what is leasing? I'm, I, I've studied it and looked, you know. In other words, where is your heart at as you seek my face? But that word leasing means falsehood, literally untruth or idol. Do you know that um, women, women can have an idol. Do I have the finest dress on? Do I have the latest dress on? Do I have the finest house? Whatever is in place of your love, and I'm talking about our Lord, that's an idol. Anything can be an idol. We need to unthrone the idol and make sure that he is first place. First place. Hallelujah. Nothing comes before my Lord. Now these two stories that I'm going to share because I ask God for examples of seeking the face of God. And, and all of you will know them. But let's turn to 1 Samuel chapter 30. In just a minute while I find it. Hallelujah. Everybody knows this story. This is when David, God's chosen, a warrior for God, doing everything that God told him to do. But in this place, he seemed to have lost it all. Now, starting at verse 1, and I'm going to read out of the Amplified, but we're going to go through verse 8. It says, Now when David and his men came home to Ziglag on the third day, they found that the Amalekites had made a raid on the south and on Ziglag and had struck Ziglag and burned it with fire and had taken the women and all who were there, both great and small, captive. They killed no one but carried them off and went on their way. Now actually, Nancy and I was talking about this as we were studying today. Actually, that is a miracle right there because usually if there's a raid, somebody dies. But you notice that God ha let just so much happen and held off some. No one died in that raid. They were all taken, but no one died. Okay, verse 3. So David and his men came down to the town, and behold, it was burned, and their wives and sons and daughters were taken captive. Then David and the men with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more strength to weep. Down to verse 6. David was greatly distressed. Well, yeah, like the, the, the father that we talked about tonight. He's in a place of distress that you cannot imagine. But compassion, compassion can hold up and take up the gap. Compassion will pray for him and care for him when he can't see anything else but the pain that he's in. David was greatly distressed, for the men spoke of stoning him because the souls of them all were bitterly grieved, each man for his sons and his daughters, but David. But David encouraged and strengthened himself in God. David said to Abathar the priest, Amalek's son, I pray you, bring me the ephod. And Abathar brought the ephod, and David inquired of the Lord. Listen, David is seeking God with all of his heart right here. He's in a desperate face-to-face -face situation. But God, David knew God. 
he walked with God. He'd been in many battles with God and had lost nothing. David inquired of the Lord saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? The Lord answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Amen. Without fail, recover all. And you can read the rest of the story. He did. But there was a place there where he had to step aside and he had to really seek the face of God. Now, we're in a place that we're fixing to recover some things we've lost. You say, well, what have we lost? Well, I want to tell you, that sounds hard, but the church as a whole has lost a lot. We're not the church that we started with. Heal the sick, raise the dead. Thousands added daily. You know, where are the people that are crowding to get in because it's so evident that we carry the answer and the power? Amen? There's some things being lost to the church. Yes. And we're fixing to be restored those back. Right. You say, why? Because there's a hunger stirring in the guise of people, in people's hearts, and they won't be denied. Amen. We went, um, I think it was Wagner we were at. And the Lord, you know, before I stepped up there, and they're a, they're a new work, you know, I'm sure that's the way it felt. But there is such a hunger in the hearts of those people. They don't even know that much about the Word. They want Him so bad they can taste it. Yes. And God told me, where my people are that hungry, they will always be fed. Yes. Always, without fail. So I had to check, am I hungry? Am I willing to forgive if I've been popped in the face and not have to pout over it for a week? See, people that are in love with the face that I saw, they don't pout. Amen. I'm telling you because I used to pout. Y'all don't need to raise your hands. I know there's powders out there. We won't share any more about that. But in that faith, you so easily forgive. You have an endless bottomless, withless love Amen. for every man on this earth. I, I didn't have that before. I mean, I loved every person, but I love you, and that's nice. That's nice enough. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. You know, people would tell you, you know, I love my family, but some of them from a distance. But see, not that face. Not that face. And I can't pour that into you. But I'm telling you, if you seek that face, it'll change your life forever. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at um, Hezekiah. And that's found in 2 Kings. And I know you know this one too. In fact, I tell our people at home, when there's really a, a situation that I'm having to do, and when I say it, they all know what I'm doing. I said, this is one of those times I'll have to do a Hezekiah, and then they understand what I'm doing. I am turning everything in this world off, and I am turning to the face of God, and that's all that matters in that hour. Don't call me. Don't ask me for food. This is me and him time. But we should have that time all the time. Okay, Second Kings, second chapter. Let me get in the right chapter here. And you know, you don't have to wait until you're in Hezekiah's place or even in David's place. What if you sought him every day? Do you know, thank you, Lord, that he is able to show you the pitfalls of tomorrow before you ever get to him? Listen, I've been there. We ate at a restaurant. There used to be in Bart who had been there for 50 years, the most amazing Greek cooks. And it was large enough for all of us to be able to eat there which we have a large crowd that go out to eat with us on Sundays. And so we always ate there. But I had this dream Saturday night. The next day was Sunday. And in this dream, there's just me and the Lord at this long, huge salad bar they have. And I'm walking along, and I'm, I'm dipping my plate. And the Lord hollered at me. He said, I told you, don't come here for two weeks. And he was so angry. And I woke up, and I go, whoa, okay. I don't know what that was about, but I can't eat at John's for two weeks. And so after service the next day, everybody's going, we're going to John's. And I looked at my husband and I said, I can't. The Lord said, I can't eat at John's for two weeks. We're not going to John's. 
Okay, but literally what happened that came out in the paper, the cook they had in the back had a live hepatitis virus, the very serious one. The salad bar was not as cold as it was supposed to be in one area, and the food was warm and the virus was breeding. It breeds for two weeks. Well, a woman died in the process. Listen, he knows your tomorrows. I'm telling you, seek his face for every step, every breath you take. You're here because of him. A lot of us have had close calls. I had a disease that should have killed me, but it didn't. I'm still here. Amen. So now I'm seeking his face for the reason yes. that I'm here. Hallelujah. Second Kings and ver uh, chapter 20, I'm sorry. I just go get so excited about him. Chapter 20 and verses 1 and 2. In those, days, Hezekiah, in those days, Hezekiah, sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Now, verse 2. And he, Hezekiah, turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, weeping. Now, listen, you take verse 1. Maybe it's a doctor's report for you or somebody in your family. We, we have just ministered to several that have just got that report, Nancy and I have, since we've been gone. And they're telling you the facts. The Lord told me, he said, listen to the facts, but believe the truth. That's the it. truth says, you shall live and not die and declare the works of my God. Yes. Whose report will you believe? You know how you get there? You seek the face of God until it's in you in abundance and you want to just erupt on somebody. Yes and spread the good news. You know, they, that, that woman wanted to know, my babies can see again. When she looked at me and she hugged me and she had tears in her eyes, even the doctors told her they were born blind and it won't happen, she wanted somebody to come along and say, there's hope. Yes. Your babies can see. Yes. Listen, if he wants healed anybody, he'll heal her babies. I told her, I'll agree. And we prayed. Her babies will see. I expect to go back, and those babies are seeing. And I don't care what the doctors think. You know, that's boldness in God. Yes. That's being in love with him so much you believe his word above anything else in your life. Yes. All right. But Hezekiah turned his face to the Lord. For him, it's life and death. All right. Now, 3 through 6. I beseech thee, O Lord, remember how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass afore Isaiah was, Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, Do you know it didn't take but seconds? Hezekiah sought the face of God with everything in him and it only took seconds. And the answer is back. Verse 5. Turn again and tell Hezekiah the captain of my people. Thus saith the Lord God, the God of David thy father. I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thee unto thy days fifteen years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my sake my servant David's sake. It wasn't just him that got the blessing. When God came on the scene, everybody got the blessing. But he answered him immediately. Another thing the Lord told me, and I mean, as I tell you this, he, he's correcting me first. I'm sharing what's already been done in me. He told me, he said, oh, and our people in Bartow, you're watching Bartow, I'm telling you. He told me to tell our people, he said, they don't come in expecting anything from me. They come in expecting the status quo to be exactly the same. He said to tell them, when you come in not expecting the status quo to be the same, it won't be. If you come in expecting the power, it'll be there. Have you ever had a child and that child's expecting something great for their birthday and then the birthday comes and goes and you don't even acknowledge the day, you, there's no cake, there's no present? No, you wouldn't do that. No. How much more the Father wouldn't do that to us? All right. Do you know he, wa he hungers? Those eyes hunger for you to expect great things. Amen. Begin to declare. That's something else he's told me in the past two days. 
if you can find it in the Word of God, even though your human mind cannot understand a way for it to come to pass, you need to begin to declare the Word over it. God's Word has the power to bring itself to pass. Amen. But you have to bring it out of your yes. mouth. Yes. You have to watch comes out, what comes out of your mouth. A lot comes out of our mouth that defeats our purpose. All right. I found out my biggest enemy was right here. Yes, yeah. it is. I can't, I won't. The light will be red. Yeah. They'll be out of what I need. You know, and when I begin to change my, my declaration and declare what God says, you're more than a conqueror. That's it. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. All of a sudden, it's beginning to change. But it had to be right here. This house. He's bringing this house in balance. He's bringing this house in balance. He's bringing Bartow in balance. He's going to show off his people like this world has never seen before. In a glory that you cannot imagine. But do you expect it? Can you sit here tonight and say, I expect that. Oh, there's a hunger in me. I tell you what, it, it just it makes the inside of me vibrate. I don't know whether to run or shout or cry. It's like a volcano and the earth kind of trembles before it erupts. People, it's coming. Yes. You won't have to worry about empty seats. You'll have to worry about enough seats. And then they'll be willing to sit or stand. Come on. You won't have to advertise your church. You just let him show up. Amen. Let him pour out of you. Yes. They'll come. come if you save their children, if you heal their children, if you deliver their children, they'll come. Yes. You open the eyes of a blind child, they'll know. People will know that you never even thought of. Hallelujah. He's going to do that in our day. That's what he kept telling me. I'm going to do it in your day. All right. Yes. The Lord hastened to answer Hezekiah when he really sought his face. Now, I've had to do that before. One time, money was owed to Bishop Martin. It was $900. Maybe that's not a lot to you, but it was going to pay our light bill. It meant a lot to me. And the, he went by to collect it after the job was done, and the man said, I don't have the money. I left the house. Brother Martin was at the house, and I took off to the church, and I got before God. I said, this is not right. That's honest money, and we earned it, and he said he would pay it, and you've got to do something about it because we need it. You're supposed to supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. I know you have it. You've got to speak to him because we need it. No fancy speech. Less than 15 minutes, I went back to the house, and there's Bishop Martin. He's all excited. He said, you're not going to believe this. I said, what? He said, the man brought by cash. Hallelujah. In 15 minutes, he went from I don't have it to cash. Come on, that's God. That is my Lord coming on the scene. Hallelujah. Psalms 2.8. Now with this one, because he spoke this to Bishop Martin, this one I challenge you to ask God this. Some, and some of you already know this scripture, Psalms 2 and verse 8. Let me get there. Verse 8. Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. When I first read that scripture, and, and I looked at it, especially after I saw those eyes, my first question was, Chuck, what do I do with all of them? I'm serious. You know, you have, you, you have several here, but what if all of a sudden... 55, 60, 70 heathen show up for Wednesday night service. Mm -hmm. And that's just the beginning. Come on. Amen. Do we have nerve enough to ask God for the heathen? Come on. We should. Yes. Yes. We should be hungry enough. I want everybody to see those eyes. I don't care what your trouble is. I don't care if you're sick or you're going through a divorce. I don't care what's going on in your life. If you can see those eyes, it'll change your life. Amen. You will know when you look in those eyes, he's never going to leave me. He's never going to forsake me. I'm never going to be alone, Chuck. Not if I work by myself, I'm still not alone. In, in those hours when something is going on, it's out of my hands. I'm not alone. He's there. And he cares for me. He cares for me. He cares for you. You know, he, he of all people is so tired of his people being broke, sick, and discouraged. 
the Lord told me several months ago, he said, tell my people that discouragement is the door. Shut that door and the rest of it will come in line with my word. But if you look around, you have looked very far. God's people are discouraged because the pressure since the first of the year especially has gotten so intense. But I'm telling you what, the power on the inside of you is also intense. Amen. And it's just like a volcano coming out. And I just look out. When it erupts, hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. Something is coming. Come that word ask of me, it, it means a lot of things, but it also means demand. I really don't see myself demanding God of anything. But you know what? I think that saddens him. In a personal close relationship, if that was your wife or husband, what if you didn't see your wife or husband for months on end? Or maybe you agreed to see her, but only on Sunday morning for an hour, and especially if he, the preacher didn't go past 12 o'clock. Well, there wouldn't be any relationship. But yet, God's chosen people tend to do that. They don't seek his face during the week. And you know, you don't even have to be by yourself. You can seek his face, meditate his word, pray in the spirit, on your job, wherever yes. you are, yes. and change the nations. You can yes. change the circumstances around you. I've done it. Amen. Now, you'll make some glad. you make some mad. Yes, you do. But you'll change the circumstances around you. Now, let's look at Psalms chapter 9. Two verses here, 9 and 10. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. He has not forsaken them that seek thee. Now in times when I'm going through something, maybe nobody else knows, but the pressure is really, really heavy. Today, I've been interceding for someone, and the weight and the pressure literally is on their shoulders all the way across and on their back. And in the spirit, they're hunched over with the weight. But in my body, I physically feel the pain. So I've got to minister to them later. But if you seek his face, let me get back to my scripture. Thou hast not forsaken them that seek thee. There is no way that you're going to lose when you seek that face. Amen. But you know what it takes to seek that face? You've got to get hungry. Come on. Oh, you've got to get hungry past wanting food. I'm talking about hungry with every fiber of your being to see the miracle working power flowing through you and through everybody else around you. Are you willing to be radical? Hey, they call you that anyway. Might as well make it count. How, the Lord asked my husband one time, which was strange because at the time I didn't know what God was doing. But I think we were watching a Western, I don't remember. But anyway, all of a sudden, Bishop Martin goes, how bad do you want it? And I looked at him like, because there was nothing on the screen say, that even related to what just came out of his mouth. And then he turned to me and he said, God just asked me how bad do you want it? He said, I better go talk to God. I said, yeah, you better. So I'm asking you, how bad do you want it? Amen. How bad do you want it? If you want it and you hunger for it, if you ever see that face, you'll crave for it. You will not have a day goes by that you don't think about that face. The nations in those eyes. Oh, God. Listen, I am not a traveler. Okay, I am not thus far a traveler. But when you look in those eyes, I would go anywhere. Amen. I don't see myself going to Haiti, but if looking in those eyes, you have to say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. Those eyes will make you hungry. That's right. Now, Psalms 14, just a couple of pages over, and verse 2, the Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of man to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. If he's looking down right now, I know that he does see. I know he sees some people that, that it literally seek God with all their heart. They want the miracle working power of God in their life and in their midst. I don't want to go through life 
face my Lord one day and not hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. I don't want to hear, well, you could have or you should have. I want to hear, well done. Yes. Well done. Because you never know the people that are watching you every day of your life and the difference that your life makes in other people. You can never be behind this pulpit, never sing a song up here and make a tremendous difference in other people's lives. The words that come out of your mouth, the life that you lead will change nations. Yes, it will. Sometimes you're the only light they're ever going to see. What if that light is dim? They don't see much. But what if when they look in your face, hasn't any, anybody ever started pouring their heart out to you and you're just looking at them and, you know, you're smiling and everything. And then all of a sudden they stop and go, I don't know why I'm telling you all of this. But see, they're drawn to you because of the one that lives inside of you. Yes. And without even knowing it, they can see it on you. Yes. And yes. that yes. ought to be. That's good. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's look at Matthew 6. In verse 33, <clears throat> everybody knows this one. I wonder if everybody does this one. But anyway, ch Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I want to tell you something. If you seek first the kingdom of God, if you seek first those eyes, all the rest of it is going to come. Because right. you can't look in that face and lie. You can't look in that face and make an, an excuse. All you can do is feel like your heart is just melting out of the center of you. And you want to never leave that face. You want to please that face beyond words that I have. I just tell you that it's available and this is that hour. This is that hour. Yes. Ooh, glory to God. That word seek means to crave, to meditate, to strive after, to demand something from. It also means to question. I've done that. You know, you have a right to question God. He wants you to have an intimate relationship with him so that the questions and the answers are coming both ways. Right. He's not a man up there with a great big paddle and you're going to get it wrong and he's going to pop you. He wants you to come before him with questions. Yes. Don't you like it when your grandchildren or your children came to you and asked you just simple things? Why does a balloon rise? Or why does a boat float? It just, oh, the father or the mother just comes out of you and you just start loving on them. Or maybe they'll just come, in, come to you in the softest words and they'll go, man, I love you. Oh, you just, what do you want? Well, see, he's that way. He wants, he wishes above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. He wants to bless you. Yes. He's not out to get you. He wants to bless you. Absolutely. Glory to God. Let's look at Psalm 27. And uh, I just got one more after this. I'm not going to keep you very long. Psalm 27. Psalm... 27 verses uh, 13 and 14 wrong book I'm in Isaiah thinking okay that doesn't look right let me get over here to Psalm y'all be patient I'm getting there okay we're close Psalm 27 verses 13 and 14 I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That is right here and right now. Yes. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And when I tell you to seek his face, I don't, I'm not talking about a 30 or a 60 second glance. Come on. I'm talking about spend some time with him. Yes. Spend some time with him. Amen. When there's no distra distractions around you, you've not only turned the TV down, it's off. Amen. You've laid other stuff aside, and you're wanting him 
to come before you and you're wanting to talk to him and pretty soon that wonderful fragrance and that face that presence will come in the room and nobody has to tell you he's near because your heart tells you and then listen listen with that quiet voice let it speak to your heart maybe he'll tell you about your tomorrows maybe he'll tell you about your ministry or your 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 church Yes. But that's what it, you know, he's tired of trying to shout over the world's conditions to try to talk to his people. He wants intimate relationship. It's not enough if my grandkids run by the house and go, hi, granny, and they keep going. It means so much to me when they come in the house and they sit down and they snuggled up to you and say, I just want to sit for, with you for a while, Nana, okay? No. Oh, Yes. He wants that with us. What a right. freedom. You talk about freedom, people, that's freedom. Amen. To have the Lord that set the whole world in motion to hunger to have time with me and with you. Woo, glory to God. The time is right here and right now. Yes. Even before this year ends, you're going to see some amazing things. I want to be in my place doing what I'm supposed to do. Did I have to make some changes? Yeah, I'm still making changes, but I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be, doing what I'm supposed to do. Yes. He is right here and right now, and begin to declare in your own life. I think it was Gary and several visits ago when I was having just a moment of attitude there. <laughs> and he says, I want you to get in front of the mirror. He's told some of the other ladies in our in our group, and he said, I want you to begin to declare to that woman in the mirror. Well, the first few times, that's going to make you feel stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I see that face every morning, and she's not that impressive. <laughs> but see, if you want it to change, I got little sticky notes. Thank God for sticky notes. And scriptures and stuff around the mirror. So if I get up and I'm foggy and I can't think of what to declare, I can declare the Word of God I got written down. But I am beginning to declare to myself. There you go. And then I declare to the nations. That's it. Now, go. one more scripture. Isaiah 43. I told, um, I told the people at one church that I'd been to, the Lord just unctioned me to tell them. He said, to think of the thing that you want the most, that is the most impossible thing out of your reach, and begin to declare your heart to me and seek my face. And he said, then expect it to come. Yes. And you could see some of the faces going, you know, because right away we're thinking, that is not going to happen. Okay, but the word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's the God that gives me witty inventions. Now, can he or not? Maybe we're at that place where he's putting us to the test. Can you believe? I can believe. I got some things that would even stun Bishop Martin that I'm expecting for. Amen. We need, hey, we are God's children. Right. We're the lights of tomorrow right. and the lights for today, and we need to begin to expect. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43 and verse 26. Out of the Amplified, put me in remembrance, remind me, of your merits, let us plead and argue together. Set forth your case that you may be justified and proved right. Bring me in remembrance. Now, he's living on the inside of me. And, and I have that inside knowing. I call it my red light and my green light. I know when I'm running a red light. And the rest of you that have done that literally, you know when you did. And so if the officer stopped you, you cannot look him in the face and go, I did. You know you did. So when I go to him, I immediately go to him and I repent. And I, you know what repent means? It means to turn from, and I'm not going that way again. That means I'm bringing a change on the scene. So the stuff I had in my heart I had to repent from, I've been repenting. And I've turned back to him, and I've honestly told him, I don't know what you're showing me. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I trust you. Yes. I trust you above all else. You were there when I didn't even know there was a you. Amen. When I was sick as a child and the doctor told my mom she won't live three days, you were there. Come on. He was there. He's the one that kept me here. 
Amen. He's the one that kept you here. Yes. When Amen. some of you had close calls, you can trust him. Seek the face of the one that's kept you. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Your whole life. Come on. That just makes me want to weep. Amen. He has kept you through stuff that you shouldn't have made it. Amen. And now he just wants to, he wants you to seek his face so you can bless the nations. We're the lights. I used to think Gary would be a light or Chuck would be a light, but I don't have to be a light. But I have to be a light. Amen. I have to yes. be a light. Yes. I love you all tonight. And can I pray over this church and just yes. speak a blessing of you? Father, I thank you so much for this assembly. I thank you for this body of believers because there is hunger in this house also. God, I get excited wherever I find true hunger. And I bless this people. I bless this congregation. I ask you to help them br come into a place of such intimate relation that if you come in the room with a whisper, they'll all instantly silence so they can hear your voice. You give guidance and direction for this body of believers and the great things that you had ahead for them. And Father, bless everyone that's here. Bless them in their daily walk. Yes. Turn up the fire on the inside of them so that the light of God on the inside of them, wherever they are and whatever they're doing, is going to be seen by somebody else. And Father, we thank you for it tonight. We expect it tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much. Um,